Hey everybody and welcome back. My name is Sam. I grew up in the FLES community. It is a polygamous group run by Warren Jeffs. I moved out of that community when I was 18 years old. And I'm Melissa. Sam and I have been married for almost eight years, have two beautiful babies, and I grew up LDS. And today we have my cousin Joanna with us again. Thank you for being here. You're welcome. We are Pleasure. really excited to share with you her story. She has a very interesting story to share. Yes, if you haven't seen the video that we did with Joanna last week about what it was like for her to be a member of the United Order, then yep. click the link above and go watch that because you know that's going to be a, a chunk of her story that we kind of wanted to give some uh, foreshadowing to what was going to be happening and kind of some more details about that. So if you're curious about that, that's where you can find out more when we mention the United Order. Exactly. And we also wanted to mention that we have a link below for Joanna's Instagram and she has now become a real estate agent and in the Las Vegas area, but she can refer you anywhere. So if you need any real estate needs, looking to buy or sell a home or even rent, right? Yes. All of your needs, so Joanna can take care of you and you can just DM her through Instagram. Perfect. Okay. There we go. Awesome. You ready to go? Let's get started. We're so excited for this video yes. and I know that a lot of you guys are excited too and yes. From the last video, um, we're just grateful for all the support and everyone loving to hear your story. So we'll start from the very beginning. In which town were you born? I was born in Colorado City, Arizona. Okay, so Colorado City, I was born in Peeledale, so you were actually on the Arizona side. Yes. Okay. For the awesome. first three years, yes. Okay. And go ahead. Go ahead. No, okay. I was just gonna say, so uh, you were born in Colorado City. Were you in some kind of hospital out there, or what was that? What was, or was it in the home? I believe it was uh, in. Do you remember the Hilldale Clinic? Up okay. There. Okay. So it was on the other side of the town. So technically, you were born in Utah, Hilldale. But, <laughs> but you trying to make but, a plug but, for but, his but, hometown. But, <laughs> but your house was in Colorado. Okay, gotcha. So yes, yes Hilldale was where most everyone from out there was born. Yes. It was kind of the clinic slash hospital where everyone would go. Okay. How do you fit into your siblings? How many siblings do you have, and where do you fit in the order? So my mom was a first wife to my father. Uh, she had five, I'd be the fifth kid. So mm. five older. And then we had one younger. Okay. Six. I was, I was the baby girl. Baby oh, girl, yes. okay. <laughs> awesome, so that's, that's so, your, so your mom had six kids then in total, right? Is she that... had two more later on. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yes. Okay, so how many moms were in the home growing up? So until I was three, it was just my dad, my mom, and us six kids. And when I was three, my dad was kicked out. When you were only three? Yes. Wow. Do you know what he was kicked out for? No. No. Which is pretty typical for those of you who've seen other videos. <laughs> when they sent away the men, yes. they didn't really say a lot of those yeah. men. The leaders of the church would just, even sometimes in church meetings, stand up in the pulpit and say, so-and-so is being asked to leave and sent away because he did something he shouldn't do. And they would never really give the details. It was just because that's what God wants. Basically. Yeah, it was, it was very vague, for sure. Would, wow. did, would they ever say like, oh, he might come back? Like, was there ever the hope of like, oh, my father might come back? Or was it, did it feel like pretty certain that he wasn't going to? So I was three, I don't remember a ton of details. My mom moved in with her dad. So we moved back over there for a couple of months and then she remarried her sister's husband, her older sister's husband. Oh, wow. Husband. Older sister's husband. Okay. Do you know if there's any tension with that? Or were they, like, happy to be sister wives? Or was it, like, not good? Because it was a hit and miss. Of course, there was tension. I don't I don't know. There can't be in that kind of a situation. Right? But uh, they, I know they did love each other, obviously. But, yes, there was tension. And I can imagine. he had had another wife, but she'd left before. I had joined, so her all of her children were still there. Oh wow! But so so he had a wife. So your stepdad had a wife that just left the community. Yes. How many children did she leave behind? I think it was eleven. Eleven. Yes, but three of them passed away. Oh. Two of them were infants because they were special needs. And, and she okay. left all of her children behind. Yes. Okay. That probably wasn't her choice. It probably she was. Yeah, probably not. I I was leave really them. young. I don't remember that part. Wow. I do remember. Because she still lived in the town, so she would come by and, you know, she'd walk past the house a lot mm -hmm. and stuff. But I don't, we never, like, interacted a lot. So. Wow. So when your mom's sister, when your aunt <laughs> married him, um, did she just instantly have to start taking care of all those children before from the previous wife? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, she just kind of took over. Um, my other mom, I don't know how she does it. She's she's Wonder Woman sometimes because wow. she she has thirteen kids herself. So Jeez. wow. Okay, so she had eight from the wife that left, and then her own thirteen. So you just said. So my mom had eight overall. Okay. My aunt had thirteen, and the other mom had eleven. Had eleven. So then when so when your when you're, I'm trying to keep everything straight. Here, really. <laughs> I mean, I have quite the you know family dynamic too, but man, okay. So, so you're when your mom married into the family that your sister was already married to this guy, she joined. She joined the family. At that point, there was just the just wives. just the two of them, just the two wives in yes. the home. Okay. So her, so your mom's sister that was already there was already taking care of her 13 children, or maybe she didn't have all 13 yeah, yet. She didn't have 13 at okay. the time, but. She was taking care of 11 children from the other mom before, and then however many she had at the time. Yes. When your mom joined the family. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah. Okay. So growing up, were there any other wives that he got, or was it, did like growing up or all your memories with your mom and your mother slash aunt? Yes. All of them were just, there was just the two of them. Growing okay. Up. Gotcha. And well, did, you, did your stepdad ever marry anyone else, or was it just those no, two? Okay. Just those two. So what was it like growing up with that many siblings? Well, very, very, very structured. Everything was scheduled out right down to, you know, who's going to babysit, who's going to do cleaning. All the bathrooms weirdly had a name because, uh, yes, it was like this one's, you know, the big girl's bathroom, this one's, you know, Willard's bathroom or just whoever it was. But we all had everything very scheduled out. So, you know, we got up, had class at five o'clock in the morning, had the family gathering. We usually had breakfast right after at six. And then we had a lot of animals. Okay. So we had, I think, nine horses and three yeah. cows. Wow. Wow. Like big animals. Yes. Not like a whole bunch of chickens. And, and we had a bunch of chickens, too. <laughs> we had a lot of chickens. Probably over 100. Wow. Oh, my gosh. We had that, too. Chickens. But not the cows and the horses. So yeah. those are, okay. you had a lot of work to do with the, with the bigger animals. Yeah. It was crazy. For a while there, um, we would get up. We had to feed the horses before class. Mm. So we'd get up at 3 o'clock in the morning and go out and feed all the animals. They had to, we had to feed them before we could eat. That hmm. was kind of the role. So. Oh, wow. How old were you when you first started um, like being in charge of things or having to do those kind of chores? Honestly, I don't exactly remember. I just, like from very young, like we always, like from five, I remember sitting up to the sink with, you know, my stool and doing the dishes and my sleeves mm -hmm. were wet. At five? And, yeah. Oh, wow. And honestly, like it was just, we all just did it, you know? I mean, you kind of have to in a family like that. expected of you. Yeah. yeah. And so we would all go out in the morning and feed all the animals and but like I loved I loved it. The stars the animals. And feeling alive that early in the morning in the chilly air, like Yeah. That that was life. You have good memories. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that's good. So so you would wake up at three o'clock, go feed the animals. What time were you I, I imagine there was a time you were expected to be done and back to the house. Yes. Usually about four forty five. We started class at five in the morning. When you say class, are you talking about morning scripture and study yes. and yes. all that? Okay. Okay. So did you you would study scripture? You would probably sing songs. Sing a hymn before and after oh, class. Okay, a hymn. Okay. Then we all would kneel down and have the family prayer in the morning. Okay. And then, and then we'd then, all file into the kitchen for breakfast. For breakfast. Sometimes it was like one or two of the girls would stay out of class and make breakfast. So. Oh, okay. okay. It happened like that a lot. Sounds sounds similar to the way my experience was, except for. Thank you goodness didn't. I didn't have to wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> for, me it was, for me, it was 5.30, so that was a lot easier. <laughs> it was early, but I, I loved the horses. Like, I rode so every day. That. And okay. That, yeah, that was, I thrived on that. Yeah, so. and some people love the morning, too. I mean, yeah. I imagine there were probably people in your family that didn't love waking up so early. Oh, yeah, of course. Or just morning <laughs> people, but, uh, okay, yeah. awesome. So then you would go to, the, to breakfast at that point. Did you go, did you, were you homeschooled, or yes. did you go to school? We were homeschooled. Okay. So we had a shop in the backyard and we had all of our classrooms out there. So we would do, you know, breakfast. Sometimes we did some morning chores because we, we grew our own gardens. We did all that. So okay. we'd have breakfast. We'd go outside. We'd weed the garden in the morning, water everything. And honestly, it was kind of fun. Just yeah. all the family together, you know. Big yeah. family. And then we'd head off to school. Okay. And to, in your backyard. Yes. Okay. In the, back, <laughs> in the backyard. It was like a shop. Don't want to shed, but you know. So was there like one mother that would do the teaching or did they take turns or who was in charge of like the schooling? So it was uh, the other mom, okay. mostly, and a lot of the older girls. Oh, okay. So, so there was like older. the different grades and they would all kind of pitch in. Oh, that's cool. And were your moms and your older sisters homeschooled as well or where did they get their education? 
I believe my my other mom, I know she went to college. They okay. used to have a public school out there. Right, that. that's true. It was still community, but they did have a public school. Mm-hmm. And then my older siblings, a lot of them did go to kind of a public school, but it was still like all the community. And it was like sized down to relatives and families and okay. stuff. Gotcha. So. But the fact that the one mother was able to go to college is like a pretty big deal. Yes, like, they, they, they were sending a lot of people away for going to nursing school and stuff in the end. So Right. They're, yeah, towards the when things started getting a little crazier with Warren Jeffs and he became the prophet, he stopped all of the public schools and all that. Everything that was uh, mingling with the outsiders, I guess you could say, he, yeah. he said no more. So, it, yeah, no, I remember that. My older siblings went to a public school, but I never got a chance. So. Yeah, that, that was me as well. Yeah. But uh, we, we had, you know, music in the community, but we never had TV. We never had internet. Earlier in my childhood, we did have, like, rollerblades and bikes, and we rode horses, and we had, you know, some games and puzzles. Funny story. When I, I was a really obnoxious kid. <laughs> I, we had a bathroom downstairs in what we call the mudroom, but it was kind of where we put all the games and stuff. I'd go down there and fill the tub full of water and dump the games and the puzzles and everything in the tub. Because <laughs> I, I was going fishing. I mean, it was fun. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> then you go fishing for all of this stuff. Yes. Oh, my goodness. So I, I destroyed a lot of them, for sure. Yeah, oh, my Lord. word. That's hilarious. <laughs> wow. So... Okay, so then you, uh, after, so you, how long was school? How long was your home school? School usually went from, I think we started at 7.30. It was either 8, 7.30 to 8, and it usually went to lunch. We'd all go in for lunch, and one of the moms would make lunch. We'd mm. all sit down at the table, like a family, have lunch. And, okay. You know, we'd say the blessing, and then we usually were back at school by 1, and we'd go okay. from 1 to 4. Oh, so you had like a full day of school. Yes. That's good. Okay, that's awesome. And, uh... Did you ever mingle with other families? Or was it always just your family doing the schooling? It was always just our family. Okay. And up until like the United Order and the separation. Then all that, yes, changed everything, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so for a while, did it feel pretty, like, did, did you know that um, like having multiple mothers was like a unique situation or that you were any different than like anybody in the world? I mean, I think we knew there was outsiders, but we didn't know how they lived their lives or like how they did stuff because for us that was our life you know That's everybody around us was like that they did the same thing and we didn't like I said we didn't have television we didn't have music outside of the community so not really we didn't know how they lived their life right yeah yeah I mean did you were you allowed to watch any movies no you never remember watching a movie ever never we had a couple like animal documentaries in my early early years mm. And a lot of them they would take and they would edit the, but it was like the big tapes, you know, the big tapes, oh, the yeah. big huge oh, yeah. TVs with the uh-huh. big, yeah. yeah, the big heavy ones and the tapes you put in, they're like this big. Oh, yes. But uh, they'd go in and they would cut some parts out of it, like if there was any swear words or any like inappropriate language or anybody that wasn't dressed with, you know, covered to their wrists and their ankles and they would cut those parts out. Swear words like the word fun. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> we know that can't was considered a bad word later on. Yes. Uh, for a long time, so very, uh, my stepdad was like, so very is a bad word because it's, so it's a substitution for heck or dang or damn. <laughs> <laughs> so very. So and I was like, oh, okay. That, and later, someone was like, no, that's a way of expressing yourself. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, it means you're passionate about it. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, that was a change for me. So up until about, I think it was about eight years old, it was just our family and we lived there. We kind of had that, you know, when I was around seven, I started uh, being scheduled to attend younger brothers and sisters. Okay. And sometimes it was an afternoon, you know, sometimes it was a couple hours. And we were also scheduled to make meals. Like me and my older sister, I was seven, she was eight. We made we made dinner. And, that, and you were in charge of the meals at, yes. that, at that age? At that age. Yeah. Wow. I remember hearing about all the safety stuff and chicken and making sure it's, you know, 165 degrees before you feed everybody. And so we did. We knew about that stuff, and it was it was nice. It was sometimes we got sick of it. We fought all the time. Oh, really? <laughs> she she would always want to make a huge meal. She uh, she got clear out, but she'd never help clean up. Uh, <laughs> and I was like, can we just make salad and baked potatoes, easy clean please? Up. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like me. I'm always like, I'll make a great meal, and then Sam does the dishes. <laughs> so that's kind of how our deal is. <laughs> hey. But yeah, but, she was from the other mom. But we we got along great. Me, I got along with most of my sisters. Obviously, we fought, but all, yeah. si- all siblings get in a tip once in a while, right? Yes. But, um, but definitely, it's a, a lot more 
chances to get into fights if there's that many siblings and, and you know what I mean? A lot more siblings to pick fights with. A lot more siblings to pick fights with, exactly. So, so starting with those kind of household chores when you're like five, seven, eight years old, were you told that like that was to help prepare you to be a mother or like what were your expectations or like what were you told about like as a young girl, what were you told about growing up and, and being a young woman? So we did have devotionals from Warren Jeffs. They were called uh, home economics. Mm. That's what okay. they called them. And they were how to be a proper wife, how to be, you know, <clears throat> groomable, how to be molded, how to be, you know, submissive and good and how to take care of children and love your man, which was kind of weird. It was never anything sexual, but it was, you know, be obedient. If you question your priesthood head, he gets sent to go for that. So if he gets sent to go, it can be on you because you're not being obedient. You're not living oh, the goodness. laws of God. So wow. that was a lot of pressure. Yes. Um, they didn't really, my mom, she did tell me growing up a little bit about, you know, periods and what to expect, but she just told me that you had them. It wasn't like... Oh, like what actually in, yes. got entailed? <laughs> yeah, so for me, I, I was a crazy child. I grew up riding horses. I had, you know, seven younger brothers, and I was kind of the leader of the younger brothers. I'd get mm. my chores done. We'd go outside. We'd ride all day. Like, I'm bow-legged because of it. <laughs> and, um... I, I heard about those periods, and I was like, I can't do that. You know, I can't deal with that. I'm, I'll just die before I'm 12. <laughs> but it wasn't like I was scared or, like, wanted to die. I was, like, lively. I loved it. my life. Like, I was happy. But for me, it was just like, yeah, it, it'll just happen that way because that, that's weird. Yeah. I, I don't know how to deal with that. Yeah. Uh, so I, I'm just, I'm, that's not going to happen to me. <laughs> <laughs> and then reality slapped you in the face. <laughs> yes. And then when I was 13, I went and found my sister and was like, um, yeah. I think I'm grown up now. Yeah. Oh. She was like, you poor kid. Oh. So, wow. so at least she had an older sister though that you could go yeah. to. And I feel like all the girls went to their older sisters. Like we never talked to our moms about it. Things like that were very hush hush. So it was like embarrassing gotcha. to grow up. It was embarrassing to talk about normal things like yep. that. Yep. Like we were never taught about sex. We were never taught about birth. And some of those things, I feel like some people like me, I kind of had an instinct with how that stuff worked. I feel mm -hmm. like. Yeah. But, and also, like, having animals and watching them mate and stuff. Like, I knew how nature worked. Yeah. But some people didn't. Yeah. A lot of people, it seems like, didn't. Because yeah. It, I mean, it sounds like it was the same in your family. In my family, they wouldn't talk about any of that. I mean, it was just yeah, a... Yeah, they did. Even with as many children as they have, I find it so interesting. Like, they didn't talk about birth, even though that was, like, something that was happening frequently, right? Between two mothers, I'm sure there were a lot of births happening. Yeah, we had, so, later on... My mom ended up having two more children from my stepdad. Mm -hmm. So she got pregnant with my little brother. And then the other mom got pregnant with twins. Oh, wow. So oh, he was born in November. Time. The twins were born in February. Oh, wow. Wow. So three so kids in three in months. <laughs> yes. And then oh, she my has goodness. my youngest sister. I have one younger sister. She had her the next December. Oh, wow. Oh, my word. So, so there was in like 12 months. Months. Oh my goodness. All around the same. What would they even... Up together, yeah. yeah. I was going to say, what did they even do? Like, I know you were saying that you would um, take care of the younger ones, right? So did the mothers, were they just in charge of like their infants and then the other children were taken care of by like older siblings or what did that so look like in your family? It was family? interesting because like even when the moms were there, they they didn't seem to to take, like they, they did. They took care of them when they were infants, but... Even we would change them, we would bath them, and they would teach us how to do that. And so, by the time, you know, we kind of knew how to do it, we, we kind of just took over it. Oh, huh. And so the other mom, work for the moms, then. Yeah. Wow. But, I mean, they, they managed everything. They, they were kind of the brains behind all the scheduling oh, okay. and all that, but we did it. We did the things. They would just schedule it out. Gotcha. Interesting. I, honestly, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm thinking back, and uh, yes, I do remember my older siblings changing baby's diapers and all that a lot at the time. Uh, so... I guess it was similar in, in my house as well. Yes. Obviously, I never did. As the, as the boys, we were we were left out of all that kind of stuff. Uh, I don't know if it was the same in your home or not. Did the boys ever change a diaper? Weirdly enough, only one of them did. My older brother, Joseph, he passed away when I was nine. Okay. But we had a handicapped son, and he was a couple months younger than me. Mm. I, I still have pictures of me holding his hand and walking him around the yard. Oh. Like, I, I miss him so much. Mm. But he loved Joe so much. And... 
he, he tended him all the time. He showered him, he bathed him, but he was the only one of the boys that did it. And it was interesting to me, but he loved doing it. Mm-hmm. Like, he genuinely loved helping out. And Dennison, he was the kind of kid that would pull your hair. <sighs> and he would scream, and, you know, he'd get frustrated because he couldn't talk, and mm-hmm. he, he couldn't always help him. But Joe would just, he'd sit there and let him pull his hair, and he's like, oh, that feels nice. Just keep <laughs> going with that. Like, he, he was... He was so they, had, they had a really yeah. strong bond then. Okay. Yes. Good. That's good. Yeah. See, I never. I mean, I don't know. I guess I can't speak for all of my brothers, but um, I never saw or never changed a diaper myself. That was something that was kind of left to the women. Yeah, it was most times. So it was interesting. But I think Joe kind of told Father. He was like, "Hey, I want. I want to help out." He loved. Mm-hmm. He loved special needs children. Oh. Okay. Uh, and you were saying that. So the first mother that you guys never really knew. She, she was had, the second mother. But oh, yes. the second mother. Oh, okay. But she had special needs children. How many special needs children were there in your family? There was uh, Donna, Esther, Crystal, Nate, Dennison, and Larissa. Oh, wow. Okay. And why, why a few? And a lot of people have asked on the channel before, like, how those children were treat, like, treated and taken care of. And um, did they all have, like, similar disabilities? Or was there, like... a a uh, different array of it. Like so, a um, all the ones from the second mom, Esther and Crystal, they died as infants. Oh. Like, a couple hours after they were born. Mm-hmm. Uh, Donna was, she couldn't walk, she just laid there, she was a vegetable, and she had like a stomach too. And she actually died before my mom married the family, married oh, the family. Okay. And then oh, Nate hard. was actually with his mom's family. So he was not even with our family most of the time, but we went and saw him all the time, and he was still a family member, but he was raised by his mom's sister. Okay. And then he passed away as well. Oh. But, um... So they all passed away fairly early on then, it seems like. I think Nate was almost 21. Okay, so he... Oh, 21, okay. Yes. So that's good. Sheesh. But, but the other two are still alive. Um, the youngest, he's one of the twins. The other special needs. Oh, okay. okay. They're both redheads. Oh. Okay. <laughs> um, he... He's walking, his mind is normal, but his body is not. Okay. So he can't open his mouth more than like five popsicle sticks. So he can't mm-hmm. swallow a lot of food, so he has a stomach too. And his hands were different, they were like kinked back. And he can't use his fingers very much, he can a little now. And his feet were really turned in, so he was in surgeries and casts mm-hmm. for probably the first three years of his life. Oh. But he walks now. Okay, yeah. but they were down, like, they took him to get the medical care that he needed. Yeah, they took him to Family doctors. Children's in Salt Lake. I remember awesome. going up there. It was the highlight to go to Salt Lake. Like, <laughs> and we would go up there, and they did the surgeries with him, yes. Okay, yeah. that answers another question, because people always ask, like, you know, are they allowed to get the medical care and the therapy and things that they need in order to be able to, like, live in happy, my family, good lives? Yes. Um, That's good. We were always told that they were very special. Oh, good. And so if they were being mistreated at all, like, Father would get upset. He didn't allow that, so that was something I was very grateful for. That's yeah, awesome. That's yeah. awesome. That was my experience as well. Uh, any any of the children or adults out there that had any special needs, it seemed like they were very well taken care of. Yes. So that's good to hear that it's not just what I saw, but also the same thing that you yeah. saw. Okay. But yeah, cool. more like growing up. You know, I turned eight years old, and we had another family move in with us. Okay. And they were someone that my dad kind of knew. My stepdad, he kind of knew them. They were kicked out. They were sent to go, and then they were invited back as oh. a whole family. So they lived with us from my time I was eight to almost eleven. Now there was there a father and a mother, like a whole father family? and two mothers. Father and two mothers. Okay, all but they, times. I think they only had a total of twelve siblings in that family. Only. <laughs> one, of, one of them had two so children, and the rest. Were. They moved into the same house. Yes. How was that having two fathers in the home? It was very interesting, but kind of fun. It our family was very strict and like going to Zion, and we couldn't say so much. And these guys had been living out there. They had been, you know, watching some movies. And so they come in, and they're kind of wild. They're kind of crazy. <laughs> and so at first, I, as a child, I was like, oh, no, they're so bad. And But then we got to know them more, and we ended up partying a lot more. And, you know, we'd do, like, we'd bottle fruit all the time. That was something oh. we did. We'd can fruit and stuff. And we'd all get together, and we would spend days and nights just out there doing it. It was fun. We'd run through the shop, and we had mm-hmm. the pots with the fruit boiling. We made jam and all of that stuff. That's so, so yeah. cool. So, so, so bottling fruit. Sick. Bottling fruit was your partying, right? Yes. <laughs> so yes. When you say partying, you mean uh, doing 
enjoyable things together like canning fruit and, and picking, <laughs> yeah, picking fruit. Yeah, wild that, Friday that night. Yeah. That, that was our wild Friday night and it just added to our huge family. And yes. We all got together like family. We ended up doing school with them and it was very inconsistent. Some days it worked, some days it didn't. Mm. Some yeah. days we all ran around, some days we fought. Um, <laughs> so, uh, sorry, I, got, I, 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 have, I have so many questions there you now. Go. Okay. So, I mean, it was very normal for me to see a, a father in the home and several mothers, but Time out here. So, so you, there's there's two there's two families in the same home, and, and a, there's a father and his wives and another father and his wives. Did you did you like go to uh, like family scripture and everything together, or did you do it all separately? Yes, we did it together. Sometimes they did it separately, but a lot of times we just did it all in the same. Room. So who did they consider like the priesthood head? Because isn't there normally like one one man in charge, one man in charge of a home? So it was kind of my stepdad. He was okay. kind of you know he kind of was in charge, if you'd say. But they considered both of them priesthood heads. Oh, okay. So. Now did you so um, what was the dynamic between like um, your mother and your other mother? Like did you go to your mother for things that you needed, or were there times where you'd like go to a specific mother depending on what you wanted to try to get? Or you know what I mean? Like what was that dynamic like? Was it pretty equal? Like did you feel like they were both your mothers or did you have um, like did you go more to your own mother? So I did connect with my own mother, but my, my own mother was sort of like a friend to me, not really a mom. Okay. <laughs> Like she dealt with some bipolar and some mental issues, and so I was there for her a lot more than she was there for me. Oh, wow. Okay. So she even now, like I, I love her, and she's she's my mom. Yeah. But um, she was more of a friend growing up. So I didn't really, and I was a little bit scared of the other mom, a little bit intimidated. So I would go to her, but it was like very hesitant. I'd be mm. like, if I have to. Gotcha. A couple times I would lie and be like, hey, I was given permission, even mm. if I wasn't. Because uh, <laughs> I didn't dare go ask. Yeah. You know the yeah. phrase, you can always ask for, it's easier to ask for forgiveness than the permission. permission. Oh, that yeah. That was a huge one oh, in my yes. family. Oh, yes. Uh, but yeah, we were all like really united and did everything. And then the Cook family moved in with us. And it was just kind of crazy. But it was a lot of fun. They, they also had horses. So they brought more horses in. Oh, wow. Oh. And then they had friends. And so every once in a while, we'd all go to church on Sunday. We would come home and we'd have a big dinner. This was before the fasting started. They have a big dinner, and they would invite another family they knew, and we had like, t like tables set up in the living room, tables oh. set up in all the spaces. We made a lot of food. I remember the pies. We made so many pies. Wow, oh. this is just for a that Sunday. That sounds this is so just good. A, this is just a Sunday. <laughs> okay, that yes. sounds like my Thanksgiving out there, but yeah. that, never just for Sunday. That's wow. It happened a lot. It was, sometimes it was once a month. Sometimes it was more. Oh wow. But uh, there was a couple, like two more families that come over. And I was friends with all their kids and all their girls, and we'd sneak out while all the adults were around singing hymns, because they, they did a lot of music. We would sing. sing a lot of hymns and a lot of that. And so they'd be in there singing hymns or talking, and all the children would head outside, and we'd go out and ride the horses and mm -hmm. sneak off, and we would play uh, Ditch, is what we called it. Okay. What was that? Uh, so there's a couple people that are it. It's kind of like, you're it, you're not it. Yeah. Um, and we would all hide. And the group tried to find everybody that wasn't in and get them because then they could help find somebody else. <laughs> gotcha. But those got wild because half of us were on horses. <laughs> oh, wow. We had a big, huge barn outside. So we'd climb on the roof of the barn and we'd climb over the neighbor's yard. And sometimes it ended up across town on the creek and we'd ride horses everywhere. And it was like, have you seen someone's own? It was all secretive and quiet. Holy so, smokes, it was a wide, like, the, yeah. the, the, the playing field was the entire town, basically. Yes, <laughs> it got so wild, and then, like, you know, all the older brothers and the fathers come out and gather all the girls up, and they're like, you're not supposed to be out here with the boys, oh. you're uh. straying away, and you can't do that. Yeah. So yeah. There, there was a lot of that, and I was, I was a really rebellious eight-year-old, mm -hmm. nine-year-old, so I, I just didn't listen, I would stick around long enough, and then sneak Run away back out. Yes. Sneak back out? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, it sounds like you had a lot more like socialization with other families than what families yeah. have. I mean, I had some with like extended family, but not not just cousins and things. I mean, I guess some cousins, but not just uh, other friends. I guess you could yeah. say. So that's awesome. awesome. That's awesome. You actually had a, a large group of people that were your friends, and other families were joined in and all that. Yeah. So. So getting to have friends, and as you're getting older, what was it like? I mean, you still weren't allowed to date, right? Oh, dating is not allowed at all. At all. No dating at all. They choose who you marry. You're not supposed to have crushes or feelings. 
They say those are natural, but they're misled. Um, so if you no have natural those, feelings. yeah, you're not being inspired. You're not, if you have those. And I remember having, I was nine years old and one, one of the boys over with us, I was like, yeah, he's cute. And I was talking to my stepdad one time. We were all into chickens. We all like chickens. We were gonna. We had all the we different all little in, kinds. And quote, quote of the day: We were all into chickens. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, I was looking at the catalog, a chicken catalog that they'd order into the mail, and I was like, "That one's really awesome." And my stepdad's like, "Why?" I was like, "Cause he likes it." Ah. And I was a nine-year-old. He was like, "Um, is that why you like it?" I was like. No, 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 that's not why. That's not why. <laughs> so it's kind of funny. I remember having little crushes and stuff. And, mm-hmm. and then I look at my little siblings and they're, you know, turned 11. So I'm like, oh, I wonder if they experience if they're that. they're starting to have crushes. Yeah. Sure they do, yeah. But yeah, and then when I turned eight, uh, I remember I was sitting at the counter one time. I was eating some snack and my stepdad came up. He was like, do you want to be baptized? And it was a question. Yeah. Not like, oh, it's time. He did tell me it was time. Okay. But he was like, do you want to be here? Mm-hmm. And I was like, I, I don't know, kind of. And he was like, well, you can you can take on, you know, the name of Christ. You can join the church and you can be baptized. And are, are you ready? And I was like, I guess. Sure. Why not? <laughs> yeah. So we went up that Sunday. Uh, we dressed all in white. We dressed, we had, they had white party dresses. So it was the same. We wore the underwear, the slip, everything. And I remember getting baptized. And for that, you, you walk into the font, they dunk you under. I think it's kind of the same as the LDS. Yeah, it's the mainstream LDS church. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's and then they, similar. Yeah, the three men lay their hands on your heads. There have to be witnesses. And that, and they bless you with the Holy Ghost. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Okay. Confirmation of the whole thing. Yes. Were you asked when you were eight? No, I don't remember being asked. It was just, okay, you're eight years old. It's time. Do you feel prepared? I mean, they didn't say, do you feel prepared? And okay. they kind of talked to me. My mother is very, 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 very involved with, you know, the church and everything about the church. She's very, very, she's a rule follower, I guess you could say. Yeah. And so she would talk to me, I mean, she was, for probably several months before I turned eight, she would talk to me about how the importance of baptism and how it's just this most amazing thing and and uh, it's the most, the most wonderful opportunity and once you are baptized, your sins are washed away. And then you can never make a mistake again in your life. Or They did or, tell me that as well. And did you have to learn the Articles of Faith and the Ten Commandments before you were baptized? The Articles of Faith, yes. I do not remember if I... I don't know about the Ten Commandments. So I had to memorize those. It was like they told us we needed to start memorizing them when we were seven. Mm-hmm. So we all did kind of know those. And then when we were getting baptized, they were like, you need to know those before you're baptized. Mm. I, I know that we talked about the Ten Commandments. Maybe I memorized them. I know for sure the Articles of Faith, though. Yes. So. We had to have all the, well, not had to, it, we got like a special recognition before you tried to get it in primary before you turned 12. In the LDS church. In the LDS yeah. church. So in the LDS church, you learn them in primary and your goal is to get them passed off before you turn 12. So it wasn't like with that. And for those of you wondering, yes, the LDS church and the FLDS church have the same articles of faith. Same 13 Because those were from Joseph from Smith. From Joseph Smith, so, yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> same one. So that is kind of funny that we all were learning the exact the same, same, same articles of faith before <laughs> <laughs> baptism. Yes. And, and, they were, and it was all at eight years old as well. Yeah. So that's oh, a similar Not thing. always, though. Oh. For me, like some of them, like they quit doing baptisms for a long time. That's true. Oh. That's when things... Okay, time out, time out, time out. So how old... Let's see here. Was Warren Jeffs in prison? Yes. When you were baptized? Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. That changes everything then. That changes everything. Yeah, so right after he went to jail, they <laughs> so. stopped doing baptism. So I remember all of us, like, a lot of my older siblings went in a group, but they were, a lot of them were over eight. Mm. But they were like, okay. we, we've been get, given the permission to baptisms again. So they started baptizing everybody. Some yes. of them were 13. Because Warren said no more baptism for a while. He said people are not worthy enough for this or something along those lines. I don't remember because okay. I was young. But I after he was put in prison? prison? After he was put in prison. Yes. Okay. So after he was put in prison, nobody else was worthy enough to. <laughs> Obviously. I don't have baptism. Okay. 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 So how did you feel? Okay. You you get baptized at eight years old. You felt ready? or I was like, I guess. Like, I don't know. So we went up there. Um, we did it. I remember coming home, changing back into my Sunday dress. We always had, you know, nice clothes for Sunday. Mm-hmm. And I was sitting on the couch and my hair was wet and I was just kind of like, okay, that was, that was an experience. Mm-hmm. And uh, they were like, I remember Father being like, how do you, so how do you feel? And I was like, 
like, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I feel good. I feel normal. He was like, do you feel blessed? I was like, yeah, of course. Everybody's blessed. He was like, okay. And he got up and told everybody, and at this time, the other family was living with us. So I remember sitting over there on the couch feeling really embarrassed, and I was like, okay, all the attention's on me. And yeah. So I was really embarrassed, and mm -hmm. but then it, just, it kind of passed, you know, it came and it went. It was just another event that everybody went through. But yeah, we lived so, through with that family. So how long did you try not to make any, ne to never make a mistake? After you were baptized, how long were you just like, I'm never going to make another mistake in my life. I'm going to be perfect from here on out. I think it was up until I was about 11. Okay, so you held on to it for quite a while. That's amazing. But it was more like, I was still a kid. I was still like, I'm going to do my thing, just going to have fun. But it was like, I had that in the back of my mind, like, don't lie. Mm. But then I would anyway. I just really regret it. Mm. <laughs> I remember praying, like, at the age of like 9 and 10. I remember praying every single night, repenting for every single thing that I had done. Oh, yeah, we did that as well. We yeah, in the morning because I was all, yeah, because oh, yeah. you do have that pressure of like, okay, Being everything's perfect, right for me. Like, yeah, I need to try and be, be as perfect as possible. And so I remember, you know, and praying, you know, please help me to be nicer to my siblings and, <laughs> and like apologizing for, and I don't even remember, like, I didn't even do big things. Like, I didn't, I don't know, like nothing big, like nothing, you know, and most of the time I was even nice to my siblings, but if I was nice that day, then I would pray that I could continue to be nice to them the next day. And if I wasn't nice, then I asked for forgiveness for not being nice enough to them. Yes. And just the constant every single night. Yeah. Having that reiterated. I mean, I was told that when I was baptized at eight years old, it was a clean slate. I started over. Like, not, any, anything that I did that I wasn't supposed to do up until that point was, quote unquote, washed away. Yeah. Everything was forgiven. So I remember coming home and I was like, okay, I am perfect right now. I'm not, <laughs> not going to make any mistakes. Like I was, I remember just trying to do everything. I mean, the chores around the house, I would just stay up late, you know, doing everything I could possibly think of to try to continue to be so, so called perfect. Right. Yeah. So anyway, it sounds like it was somewhat similar for yeah. you as well. Yeah. Well, and now it's so funny now that we have kids, it's like, yeah, there's nothing that they could do. They could yeah. do at these young ages, you know, at three and five. And then now like looking back at eight, I thought that somehow I had done stuff that needed <laughs> to be wiped clean is right. uh, comical now as a parent, I feel like. Yeah. yeah. Eight is so little. Yeah. It really but at eight is. years old out there, you know, you we were we taking care of kids, chores, we were you're changing. making dinners. Yeah. We were doing all that. So... I felt like a grown up. I felt so big. I remember we went to a priesthood project. We also had priesthood projects. Mm -hmm. And that was like we would do a lot of the food processing. We would was store this, a lot of it. Was this just on Saturday? It was it was every day, okay. just any day. We'd process a lot of food. Uh, we'd go like nut picking. We had like a farm we'd go mm -hmm. nut picking. I remember that. Wait, you had the farm? Or was this the it one was, in Hurricane? It was the one in Hurricane. In Hurricane. Or Hurricane. Yes. Hurricane. I think, yeah. it, didn't the Baptist Church get like in a lot of trouble because of kids picking yes. stuff out there? Yes, considered yeah. child labor. Okay, because I was like, I remember living in St. Yeah. George and there being like a big legal dispute and like issue, you know, the Baptist Church is using child labor and like it was like a reason to like go after them. I just remember seeing that in the news. Yeah. Being an outside community. The funny thing is that that orchard going and picking nuts from the FLDS community was going on for years. So many. I mean, even when I was a kid out there, I did the same thing. But it was, like, so fun. Like, us kids loved that. Right. If we got to go pick nuts, we were privileged. We mm -hmm. got to like, go for a, you know, long drive. We That was the highlight of our yeah. lives. We got to get I didn't out. enjoy it very much, but I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad that some of them did. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm going to go pick nuts all day. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, we did but, the chores and stuff. We had the priesthood projects, and sometimes it was the moving crew because they'd move families in different homes whenever mm -hmm. they wanted to. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it was the moving crew or like the processing plant, and that's what we called it. So and it was just a lot of different things, and I just grew up doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's just what you're used to, yeah. right? So this could happen any day throughout the week, and you just have to put school on the back burner for the time yes. being and go do what you were told to do. Yes. Okay. School was always on the back burner. On the back burner. <laughs> You're like, yeah. it's great if we can get to it, but... So, I mean, obviously they, they would teach about the importance of school. That's why you had homeschooling. Yes. But it was just one of those things that school comes second after everything else, I guess. Yeah, it was <laughs> so. like, education's important. We need to be educated. We need to be a knowledgeable people, but... Mm -hmm. Let's do all these other things Instead. first. <laughs> yeah. So, and then after, like, for the first couple years, I think it was like first grade was really consistent for me. Mm -hmm. And second grade was when the other family moved in, and it was a hit and miss. And mm -hmm. it was just like yeah. that from then on. Okay. 
that'd be hard to coordinate with that many children and like having two full families with multiple wives. Like I can't even imagine trying to yeah, and it's coordinate. Not, and it's not like they could send you off to school. I mean, they had to make sure that everything was being taught and they, they were in charge of it, right? So yeah, and scripture was in everything. Scripture was in school and they took the money system out of school and they took all of that because money is the root of all evil. So they didn't teach us about money. They didn't teach us mm -hmm. how to, you know, pay bills or how to use money properly at all. Yeah. How to save money anymore. because you didn't have any money to save, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Do you feel like when you left, like, was it hard to uh, end up, like, having good uh, practices with money and, like, being it able to manage was, money? It was, but I got a job at 16. Oh, okay. I kind of just, I went out and got a job and was like, Mom, I got a job. I was just going to ask him, like, were you allowed to do that at 16 years old? So they actually told me not to. Okay. This was, you know, the character. He was like, you need to get rid of that job. I was like, no, I'm not going to. Uh, okay. So it was like, you, Little you rebel. make me. At 16, you were already just doing your own thing, yeah. though. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, we had that family live with us till I was 10. And my older brother, Joseph, that I was talking about, he got kicked out when I was 7. He lived with, he lived with uh, my real dad. Oh. Okay. And so he wasn't with us for a long time, but he, he was like my favorite brother. He was he was my hero. Mm -hmm. All the other brothers would mock me for being a weird fisher kid in the Barlow family. Oh. <laughs> but uh, he would defend me. He was always like, leave her alone. He would fight. He would fight him and stuff. And, oh, wow. But he, he was my hero. Oh, but it was crazy. I would do things to get in trouble, and he was never like, I'm so sorry or sympathize. He'd be like, you can handle it. You're strong. Mm -hmm. So he was like that kind of a brother. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, when I was nine, he, he passed away. So, can imagine. Oh, that's a lot of family loss. I know it's crazy thinking about. Uh, I remember thinking because the other siblings, you know, the handicapped siblings, had died before I was a part mm. of the family. So I remember thinking, you know, I'd go to funerals and stuff, and accidents would happen, and I would be like, "This would never happen to my family." Mm. But I remember we were all outside. We had a big apricot tree in the front yard. We go pick all the apricots every July. Mm. We're all out. We had a big back porch. We're all out there pitting apricots. We pit them all to get them ready. And father came out and was like, I want everybody in the living room. Oh. And we were like, oh, okay. This is, you know, happened a lot. Sometimes it was just to tell everybody thanks. Sometimes it was to read a scripture. It happened in the middle of the day sometimes. Oh, wow. And so we all went in. We sat down. The other family was with us as well. And they came in. They sat down. And he was like, uh, jo Joseph is in the hospital on life support. And he could, he was going swimming with some friends. And he had, he had gone under for too long. Oh, jeez. Mm. But, um, I, so I was just, I remember just, like, breaking down. Oh, that's Because, yeah. you know, they were like, we don't think he'll make it. Mm. And uh, he's like, me and mom are, Mother Rev, she's my mom. He's like, we're going to go down to the hospital. And I think this was Wednesday. It was either Wednesday or Thursday. And so they went, and I remember it was, it was right after 4th of July, and people were still doing fireworks and stuff around the town. And it was raining, it started raining that night, and I remember going out, just standing on the porch, and there was fireworks going, and it was raining. And I, just, I remember just praying.